Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to a very special episode of Easy Buckets. How are you guys doing today? Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. In today's video, I got something that I guarantee you guys are going to love, especially if you're a Lakers fan. We're going to be talking about the Lakers roster and talking about some free agents that I believe they should sign to complete their roster. They currently have 12 players, which means they got three more spots. And I believe with these three spots, there are some ideal perfect targets in mind. So if you're a big Lakers fan and want to know the perfect players they should sign to fill out their team, you're going to love this video. Let's not waste any time. Let's get into it. The biggest question for the Lakers right now is who are they going to sign for their final roster spots? From what we are expecting, the Lakers are going to sign maybe one or two more players and then save their few final roster spots for targeting players via the bio market. And when talking about this upcoming bio market, there are going to be plenty of options. But for this video, we're not going to be looking into the bio market. We're going to be looking at the roster right now and who they should sign to end their roster spots. As of right now, the Lakers do have their main rotation, but if they can execute a few more free agent signings that will be great third string players, the Lakers depth could even be better than it already is. For this video, I'm going to be talking about four players that I believe would be perfect as a 13th, 14th and 15th option. The first player on this list is talking about LaMarcus Aldridge and he right now is a very popular veteran big man that could simply be a third string center behind Marcus Gasol, Dwight Howard and Anthony Davis. When talking about LaMarcus Aldridge, he's one of the more popular NBA names when it comes to an older veteran power forward that can score, be a leader and simply bring it an all around aspect to simply impact the team in a positive way. He's highly respected, a six-time NBA All-Star, and last season, he played the majority of the year with the San Antonio Spurs and then got bought out and went to the Brooklyn Nets. After playing a few games for the Brooklyn Nets, LaMarcus Aldridge looked great. He averaged about 12 points per game and was simply a star in his role at the starting center position. But in mid-April, LaMarcus Aldridge gave the NBA news that he's going to be retiring due to a heart condition. In my opinion, I was very sad to hear this news because LaMarcus Aldridge was going to be a big factor to a potential championship run, but honestly, I respect his decision to take care of his health first. But then a few days ago, we just got some great positive news that apparently LaMarcus Aldridge and his medical staff has cleared him and he's possibly thinking about coming back to the NBA. And right now, he's thinking about joining the Lakers or the Brooklyn Nets, two championship contenders. And oh boy guys, when I heard this report, the first thing I thought about is getting LaMarcus Aldridge to simply be the Lakers new starting center over Marcus Gasol and Dwight Howard. I said third string earlier, but in my opinion, he is better than these two because all of them are 36 years old but still have a lot to bring to the table. Of course, the biggest thing about the Lakers right now is should they target older players? As of right now, their roster has a lot of veterans, players over 33 years old. So some Lakers fans do say target younger players, but if the Lakers do not care about that, they want to go full throttle for the NBA championship, bring in the best experienced players possible, Marcus Aldridge is my favorite target. The next free agent on this list is talking about Harry Giles, and if the Lakers want to go for more of a youth point of view, signing young players, Harry Giles is 24 years old and could simply be a great third string center off the bench as a backup center. Harry Giles got drafted by the Sacramento Kings, spent most of his career there, and then just played for the Portland Trailblazers. But because he's playing behind players like Yusuf Nurkic and Ennis Cantor, Harry Giles can't really show the world what he can do. A big perk of signing with the Lakers is that they're such in the bright lights. Everybody's watching the Lakers, even if Harry Giles plays 5-10 to 10 minutes. If he's playing well, other NBA teams are going to see his value and then possibly give him a better contract in the following year. Harry Giles is a very fast, mobile center and is showing us a lot of basketball IQ. He's a great playmaker and sometimes gives that energy positive vibe. And with the Lakers kind of needing a young spark plug, somebody to contribute when needed, Harry is a great idea when it comes to an inside presence. I am going to say this though, for Harry Giles to be better, I want to see him be more aggressive in the paint, drawing fouls, for the most part Harry Giles is a great finisher, he can finish around the basket but usually on alley-oops and plays where he has a clear shot. But with the NBA being a physical game, if Harry Giles can use his body more, get to the line more, I do believe he could be a more effective big man. 
Lamarcus Aldridge is a great target when it comes to a veteran experienced player, but Harry is a great target if they want youth. The next player on this list is talking about Lance Stevenson, and Lance Stevenson is a Lakers fan favorite. A big reason why I'm putting Lance on this list is simply because I believe Lance can make a return for the Lakers with him being 30 years old, he has a lot to offer. During this year, the Lakers lost Alex Crusoe, who was their backcourt combo player that could be a great spark plug offensively and defensively, and with the Lakers losing that energy, Lance would be a perfect replacement. He has played the last two years in China, but in China, Lance is one of the best players in the game. And with him having similar attributes to Alex Crusoe, an oversized backcourt player, I do believe he is a great replacement. With him previously being on the Lakers two years ago, the Lakers fans love him. He's a high energy spark plug, we all know he brings to the table so many antics, so many entertainment. But I believe with the Lakers now having Russell Westbrook, LeBron James, he's going to be more of an off-ball player be a catch and shoot guy, but also be needed if he has to dribble the rock. He's a pesky defender and averaged about 37% the last time he was on the Lakers. And now with the Lakers having more playmakers, high level ones, I do believe that efficiency is going to increase. Lance has always been a very popular Lakers target and this offseason, they need another backcourt player behind Kendrick Nunn and Malik Monk. Lance is a great target. He has more experience and knows the Lakers playbook. Oh yeah, and another thing. He has been coached by Frank Vogel twice, on the Indiana Pacers and previously the Lakers. And the last player on this list is talking about Paul Millsap and Millsap is also a popular target if the Lakers want a more reliable veteran big. Paul Millsap is currently a UFA and unrestricted free agent and spent the last 3 years with the Denver Nuggets. And I'm kinda surprised that right now no NBA team has signed him. I do believe a big part of it is him being 36 years old, his game has definitely gotten worse over the past few years, but I do believe as a third string center and a third string power forward, Paul Millsap is an overqualified target. During last season for the Denver Nuggets, he averaged about 9 points, 5 rebounds, 2 assists, 1.5 steals and 0.5 blocks off the bench for the Nuggets, and with the Nuggets having future players like Jermichael Green, Will Barton, Michael Porter Jr. taking over as their forward spots, it made sense for Paul Millsap not to resign. If you guys don't know what Paul Millsap brings to the table, he's a 6'7 power forward that is simply very versatile. He can play great defense, he's a veteran leader, and he's a playmaker. Simply imagine a Draymond Green kind of guy, but a little bit worse. Of course, when it comes to it, signing Paul Millsap or Lamarcus Aldridge, who do you pick? And as we speak, we don't actually know if Aldridge is going to come back to the NBA. So if he doesn't, Millsap is a great target. So yes guys, this wraps up my video for today, talking about the Lakers roster and signing the perfect players to end their team. What's most important to me is I want to know your thoughts. Which of these free agents is your favorite target and is there any more targets out there you believe the Lakers must sign? Put those down in the comments below. But other than that, take it easy, God bless, I'll see you all next time on Easy Buckets. Woo!